Imagining there's something in here that you needed to desolder, reflow the solder. I'll uh, proceed to remove all these boards from the plastic case here. Uh, before I do that, let's uh, have a little whistle stop tour of what's going on here, or what I guess is going on here. I'm not even sure if I've got access to the schematic on this, but some aspects of a circuit like this look somewhat familiar once you've opened enough of them up. So we know that the record and arrays heads terminated here, so this is going to be the record playback amplifier. And you know, it's, it says playback level, record level, group one, group three, group four. So there's a lot of giveaways that that's what that board is. You, you can also see these eight relays they'll be switching whether the record and playback head is connected to the record amplifier or the playback amplifier. Something that I like about this is all the bias stuff is up in its own little separate board up here in this corner. 85 kilohertz is the main bias frequency so I guess this is the oscillator or some combination of these components. Sometimes you'll see one large silver unit and it's actually got you know a bunch of inductors and capacitors inside there to create the oscillator but I think this is all discrete components on this one. Got the mains transformer, so it'll be taking your 240 volt AC from the wall, and that's going into the primary coil, and then out of the secondary coil, which has less windings than a lower AC voltage, will be entering this board. You can see that there's two slow blow fuses there, there's a rectifier under there, these will be the main filter reservoir capacitors that are responsible for taking the rectified signal, which is still a bit wiggly and making it a bit flatter, so that that can be distributed. Looks like it's going via this cable over here, but um, in this section here you can see we've got four different voltage regulators, so at a guess, probably this one up here, see there's another large value capacitor here, that's probably more filtering. This is probably for the motor, the 12 volt regulator, just because those two sockets under there is where the transport connected and the power for the motor is going in. And then these other ones, it's probably something in the region of 5 volts for logic integrated circuits, things like this, and for um, LEDs. And then you're probably, I'm not exactly sure what the operational amplifiers run on on this. I've seen values between 9 volt and 15 volt, depends on the system. Um, but there'll be a positive and a negative reel because the operational amplifier is uh, working on AC then uh, you need to have a positive and a negative input at the same level of DC so that it can create voltage swing. I mean, I'm kind of bollocking up my description there a little bit. It's probably a little bit fluffy from a real engineer's point of view, but from the point of view of us folks are just trying to get these things working so we can make music with them, that's good enough. And uh, yeah, I, I guess that this is that big giant one that's got all the control logic or at least some of the stuff to do with making the motor responds to the control logic. Maybe the control logic's up on the other board. We'll, we'll figure that out as we go along. This little daughter board, which I already removed a couple of screws because I was trying to figure out where to unplug this. And um, that's got our remote jack. Punch in and out. Sorry, that's the remote control input and that's your headphone socket. That's the very loose one. So since I started to unplug that one first anyway, I'll continue with that. Uh, you can see that there's a common ground wire connected to this big sort of metal chassis bit here. So I'll just unscrew that. And then we've got a ribbon cable. It looks like I can pull it out at either end, but I'll pull it out there. So just diagonally down into the left from this big integrated circuit. This comes out, and it's convenient to have that separate because I'm definitely going to want to resolder that headphone socket. Um, the owner did mention that there was a problem with the headphones, like it was noisy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a wonder that it worked at all. All three of those tabs are broken. I hope that's the only thing that's wrong there. I don't have to fix anything else. That would be nice, but probably wishful thinking. You can see that there are little holes in this, and they've used cable ties just to keep all these cables well, I say cable ties, uh, zip ties. So I'm just going to hook sharp scissors onto the here and cut those. Obviously, I'm being careful to make sure I don't cut any electrical cables while I'm there. And, uh, you know, if you're going to cut those, then you do want to make sure that you've got a supply of cable ties around to replace them with. So that gives us a bit of a clearer idea of what's going where. 
So this cable coming over from the power supply to, let's see if this board's labelled, does it say? Mm, I can't see the name of the board there, but this is very in fixed speed, so there's your tape speed calibration pots I've just noticed. Anyway, this cable, it looks like it's going to come out at this end. And it's soldered in at this end, and then we've got one cable here. Another one of these little built-in cable tidies here. Pull that out. I think I should probably do some sort of colour coding now. So what I'm going to do is all the ones that came from this board, put like a pink streak on there so I remember. Put some pink on there and put some pink on the plastic of that header. So these two, which are running from the top right corner of this record playback board, are going in this bottom right corner here. I just realised I've got autofocus on so sorry the lens is breathing a bit um four and five pins so we're not really gonna get them mixed up so if i just put like a little pink mark on those and we'll know that they're going back to that board just one more by the looks of it and that's coming from this corner of the record playback board to uh or just to the left of this little group of three capacitors. So I'll just put a pink mark on that one so I know that that's going to that board. I've got common ground running from the power filtration board up here. I mean, which of the holes these ring connectors go back into isn't important. You just decide that by the length of these. And then these two, it looks like these two um, metal, what were we calling those? What was I calling them? Chassis, chassis extensions. Let's call them chassis extensions. These two chassis extensions are being connected by a swing connector. I'll just take that out just now. I'm not sure that I absolutely need to do that in order to get this board out, which is what I'm working towards. I'm going to have a bit of a fiddle off screen, turn off the autofocus on this and uh, make sure that I know what I'm doing so there's not too much faffing around. It looks like I might be wise to remove this, this metal plate here. What was I calling it a second ago? Chassis extension? Fuck's sake. Stupid name. Anyway, I'll come back in a sec. Yeah, so it looks like there's a little tab here that's part of this metal plate that's going to prevent that board from coming out. So I'm going to remove the plate first. I'm going to leave the voltage regulators attached to the plate because although I could unplug them from here then it would be quite easy to mix the cables up so I've got like the whatever 15 volt regulator connected to the 5 volt regulator so things would not work or possibly overheat or something. I'm also not going to unscrew them from here just because I don't want to have to replace the kind of heat compound that's between those layers to make sure that those conduct heat. So um, I don't see any huge inconvenience to have this plate sitting alongside this board imagining that I had to you know, replace these capacitors or something. So looks like we've got a screw here and here. Third one up here. And the first one here. Uh, notice that the two that came from there are quite a bit larger than any we've taken out so far. The other two are uh, very similar. And it's still attached somewhere. Okay, looks like there's a screw in here that I need to remove as well. Yeah, so I can't really pull it up any further than that because of the, uh, this cable connecting to this voltage regulator is very short. But okay, I'm trying to figure out how else this is attached. So screw the top right here. And then it looks like we've got plastic pins holding this in. We've got these double-sided plastic pins, you see. Um, we haven't come across them in this build yet, um, but I've seen them before. I think they're attaching to this plate, so actually to get this out, the easiest thing is to take this plate out as well. So there's a screw up here, and it looks like that's going through a tab of um, some shielding from below. You see that? And there's another one this end. 
It's those standard size screws again. <laughs> this board's attached to that metal part from that side, so it looks like the easiest thing, at least to begin with, is to take both of these metal plates and both of these boards out in one go. So let's see what else is attaching here. So we've got two ribbon cables coming from this bias board. Attaching the top left corner of this record playback board, so let's pull those out. Two screws. This top left corner. And uh, the screws in these are very easy to see because they go through these raised metal parts that are built into the printed circuit board. Another one here, see? I mean, the build quality, visually speaking, the layout and everything, and, and this is great. I mean, it's you know better than tasking and Fostec stuff that I've looked at. Okay, let's try to stop the weight of the transformer and tipping that. So, yeah, that's all coming away. It's not too unwieldy, I suppose. Imagining you did want to separate this, but this is what I'm talking about with the plastic clips. I hope that's not going to be too out of focus. Both parts of it come in from this side. So there's two parts, when you replace that, you push that through the hole, you know, you need to push, push those four bits together so it goes through the hole, and then you push the pin into the centre, and uh, that causes those to splay so that they won't come out again. So I've got one of those, that was in that hole there, there's one there, there's one there and one there, so to each side attaching these two boards to this metal clip in the centre. But the objective here is really just to show you access for repairs and we've got that for these boards now. A little bit of shield in there, that's probably glued down it is. Yeah. And some foam separators just to make sure that that board doesn't touch underneath. I'll get in there and dust that in a minute. Imagining we needed to replace something on this bias board, what would we have to remove? Well, three screws by the look of it, or maybe only two. Yeah, only two, two diagonal corners. Standard size of screw again, yeah, so you can get the underside of that and solder if you want to. There's a little cable tidy here. Big plastic headers with a tab. I've got to open before I can pull that out. Oh, I've completely misunderstood that clip. I think you meant to push in. Yeah, I was pulling it out the way, but you meant to push down so that releases. I was just confusing it with a different kind of clip. Anyway, so those are the. You're not going to get those mixed up. Two sets of cables that are coming from the transformer. So I guess this is the AC input from the wall that's going to the primary coil. And then, I mean, I'm assuming there's some relationship between the two red wires and the two blue wires, like they're duplicates. You know, maybe they're both, whatever, 30 volts AC and they're both 10 volts AC. So they can be sent different places um, as inputs to different rectifiers. Or, Anyway, but I'm pretty sure that that's the secondary side and that's the primary side. Transformer's going bad. <laughs> you know, how's that going to happen? And it's like loads and loads of insulated coils of wire around an electromagnet and the same thing on the other side with a different number of coils. So, I mean, unless you actually break the electromagnet, you know, so much current goes through here, like, you know, a lightning bolt, that the uh, coils fuse together. The, the chance of this actually becoming damaged doesn't seem very high to me. I've never had a damaged transformer. I mean, I've had damaged input to the transformer. I've definitely had damage or problems on this kind of board, you know, caps leaks, ready to fire stop working, that kind of thing. But I don't think that this is likely to break. And, you know, what's your likelihood of finding a replacement part if it does break pretty low unless you've got another NT8X? But just for shits and giggles and for the sake of being complete, I will just remove it. Looks like we've got four screws. Attaching this big plate to the plastic case below, and uh, you can see this bottom right corner. There, again, there's a tab so that the shielding is connected. Right, so that's me removed those screws. So now that will lift out. And you can see furthermore that um, the transformer itself is attached to this plate by four screws. 
and uh, those are those bigger screws again. We had two of them up here. Shame we're back to the smaller screws. One, two, three of them. And yeah, this is nice. There's little screw symbols beside the holes on this. It's much more likely that we would have to remove and repair this board than it is the transformer. I seem to remember there's also a screw in that side where the input socket is. Yeah. So that tinkling sound you may have heard is the bit of the broken door falling off, so that means I'll be able to fix that, spin wheel that on. Yeah, same kind of screw again. There we go. So that's everything out of the bottom half. By the way, if you're wondering, all that white stuff at the bottom, that's a, a kind of glue to stop this these rattling around, that is not leaking electrolytic fluid. If these were leaking then what you might see in there is a sort of brownish yellow staining of that stuff that's then running onto other parts of the board. Uh, but I mean the, the main thing is that those are all completely flat at the top so they're not leaking. Um, there would be a swelling or possibly even see these thinner parts of the metal here they would actually kind of burst. Like extreme cases you'll actually see the winds and winds of uh, tissue paper from inside the capacitor poking out through the top. But yeah, I mean, it powered on fine so I know that this is all okay. Okay, so when I come back I'll start to tear down the upper section of the Yamaha MT-8X.